Okay, hello guys. I'm gonna record now the entire process for the uh, project that we have for the class. So first we have to import the points that will be used. Remember I'm making some simplifications uh, just to show the basic steps. Additional steps might have been covered during the lecture. So we can see the points here. Now we create a surface. We give a name to this surface. Let's say it's existing ground. I'm just going to set the defaults. We expand, expand, arrive to definition, right click on point groups, all points, <coughs> okay you have now contours to this surface we're gonna add an alignment the alignment is gonna be called horizontal alignment and typically we give the name of the road you could go for design criteria I will not select it in this case to be faster I'm gonna introduce a tangent tangent grid curves I'm gonna start at a location like this I'm gonna go there here and I'm gonna finalize there if you notice these radius are very chart so we go to the table we increase them to something bigger maybe 700 you will have calculated the minimum radius following what we learn in the lectures in class you will see that the radius is now bigger both cases if you are still not satisfied on the size of one of those radius you can zoom in and you can manually edit okay that's my horizontal alignment I'm gonna introduce now here above a vertical alignment I'm only going to introduce for the center line. You can in you can do the same for the edges of the road. I'm going to accept the defaults. I'm going to say creating profile view. You can see there however it's a little difficult because the grid is covering the entire thing so there is a little trick so the grid only arrives up to the surface so we're going to make right click profile view properties we're gonna come here and we're gonna clip it and we're gonna clip it say ok apply ok so now you can see the visualization is better I'm gonna introduce now the vertical alignment gonna ignore the design criteria again but you should do it I'm gonna go for tangent with curves
right click to exit and continue drawing <clears throat> and I am on purpose cutting a little bit and now I will on purpose fill a little bit Remember, you will need to play with this and adjust it later on. For now, this is our first pass. Okay, so I arrive to my last section, I make a right click. I can inspect the curves that I have. In this case, I might want to extend a little bit to make it softer. And you might want to revise the curves that you have, also in terms of the elevation. You can do that, or the length. All right, I will not touch the rest of the curves to be able to save some time. Let's say I'm finalized here, so I close this tool. I have now my horizontal and vertical profiles. I will add an assembly. This one I'm adding is only to be able to access the menu. So I will add it there, click on it, and the dynamic menu appears. I want to see the tool palette. And I will just come to an empty space and insert whether my primary road section, secondary road section, or divided highway because these are pre-built assemblies. Let's use the primary. <coughs> you can accept that and now we can close the tool palette oh sorry that's the drawing here it closed there now notice the uh, fill and slope is like uh, almost one to one Okay, uh, I will keep it this way if I have a mountainous uh, kind of road section. You can change it and adjust it. I will show you how in class. I will uh, delete this other assembly that we don't want. And I still have the assembly I introduced here. <coughs> now we're going to go for a corridor. The corridor is just going to be corridor or corridor 1. The style we're going to keep it as simple, basic. Alignment is horizontal alignment. The profile is vertical alignment. The assembly is the road section that I want to use. The target surface is very, very, very important, the existing ground. And I go for OK. As I explained in other videos, you will have here road sections for different type of road. Maybe you have one with a sidewalk, you have another one with a guardrail, you have another one that is a bridge, 
So they will have separate row sections. For now, I'm just going to keep one and say, OK. I rebuild the corridor. And this will take the central line of the horizontal alignment and superimpose the assembly for the road section, primary road full section, on top of it. Okay, I have a problem here because this is not able to identify a place. I'm just going to remove it. That's probably a problem here in my vertical alignment. Ah, uh, you see, this doesn't arrive fully to the end. So I need to adjust it there to this end point. So it snaps perfectly into the starting and ending point. So now it does. I will check the starting point just to make sure that the same is not happening here. Both lines are arriving on the same point, so this is good. I can introduce my corridor again, sorry. So I'm going to call it corridor 1. This is my vertical alignment. This is my assembly. This is my existing ground. Go for OK. I will apply. Rebuild the corridor. Click OK. And everything is working fine. I can zoom in and I can visualize my corridor. You see? <clears throat> From this corridor, I want to create a surface. So I click on the corridor to activate the dynamic menu, and I go for corridor surface. The corridor surface, you need to add the uh, corridor surface. So you need to click here on this icon. And we are going to add the top of the road, that is the surface, the asphalt. And we will add the datum, which is the subgrade soil after you remove the uh, organic material and you have done your excavation where is the surface of the road that is subgrade soil on top of which you will add the granular layers and the asphalt so that one is called that too <clears throat> before i go forward i go to boundaries I make a right click on my corridor and I will say corridor extends as outer boundary. This is so that your cut and fill lines will go and cross through the um, existing ground and provide with all that surface. We go for OK. We rebuild the corridor. We can zoom on it. And you will see how is variating this is because of the surface I created. Very good. So now we have that. We will now introduce cross sections. For that, we need sample lines. So we click on the sample lines. It's asking for an alignment. I click Enter. I only have the horizontal alignment main street, but if you have multiple streets, you have to select the corresponding horizontal alignment. We say, OK. This sample line collection is going to be my cross-section collection, but we can just leave it by default as SL collection one. Look here. We have the existing ground. We want that. We want the corridor.
and everything appears to be fine. So I click OK. I go for this hammer and I say by range of stations. I adjust how far is going to extend to the left of the center line. So let's say 30 meters or 35 meters. I don't think I need more, but if you are uncertain, use a bigger amount. 35 is probably fine. <coughs> 35 to the right. Now, how often do you want the cross section? So let's say 20 meters. Maybe we can increase to 50 to don't have that many, but it's better to have shorter sections. So let's say 50 and we can go for OK. To finalize, you can make a right click. The right click will introduce your cross sections uh, sample lines. So if I increase here, you'll be able to read the label. So this is a station 3 plus 100, 3 plus 150, 3 plus 200, etc. Good. So now that I have my uh, sample lines, I need to introduce my cross sections. I'm just going to find a space on the drawing. I'm going to put it here. If you see this scale, this is not a problem of the drawing. This is a problem of the scale. So when you change back your scale, that should be fixed. And you see it's now fixed. So we're going to introduce the uh, cross sections, which are here. Section views. Create multiple. We're going to introduce all of them. The alignment is the horizontal alignment. The sample line group is the one we just created, which is number one. The section view is going to be cross sections for Main Street. <coughs> you can check the uh, different defaults. I think we can keep them all. And we can say create section views. This is asking for, I think, is the bottom right uh, corner. So let us let us click here. It is either the bottom right or the bottom left. It was the bottom left corner. Okay. And this will bring the cross sections. Let's zoom into a few of them to uh, inspect them. Let's zoom a little further. You can see here the cross section, okay? And uh, I can uh, pan to see other cross sections. You see? In this case, for example, uh, I'm doing some cutting, right? But that is not currently visualized. To visualize, I need to compute materials. So I click on the grid to enable this dynamic menu and go for the compute materials. It is for the horizontal alignment of Main Street and the sample line one. OK. My existing ground is going to be the existing ground. My datum is going to be the uh, corridor one. Uh, remember, I had the top and the datum. So this one is the datum one. And I can say OK. We give some time. And you can see how the hatch change here. And this is highlighting where I need to cut or fill. Let's pan to see another section. Maybe I zoom out. Sorry. Let's just zoom out. And now I can zoom in probably. You can see. So this will have computed materials. I can add a table with the calculation of those materials.
so I'm gonna put the table here on an empty space I can go to analyze I think and I can go for the uh, total volume because right now it's cut and fields so cut and field is what I want the alignment is main street horizontal sample line is correct the material list is the one I just calculated there's only one and let us keep the defaults this is how the table is going to distribute keep it in dynamic so if you do any adjustment it's going to adjust we can zoom in to this and you will see it has the calculation of the materials you see so this has the cumulative material the cut area the fill area the fill volume cut volume and then the cumulative fill cumulative cut that means that we can produce the mass hole diagram which uh, we can access here so we're going to use the horizontal alignment the sample line group one the mass hole you can give a name i'm just going to call it mass hole main street and the mass hole view let's have it as a standard we say create diagram let us insert it probably around here it is important here because it's in line with the horizontal and the vertical and you can visualize what is going on we can zoom in and we can pan so you see some material uh, is accumulating some material accumulates but then drops a little bit and is not closing in zero If I go and adjust here, my vertical, this mass hole diagram will change. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to bring it down. That means that it's going to cut material. So my cut is increasing. And my mass hole diagram should update automatically. And it's aligned with this, I think. So I should have an increase in the mass hole. Do you see? It's increasing now. Now I'm going to do the contrary. I'm going to go to my mass hole. Uh, to my uh, vertical and I'm gonna increase this one up sorry I need to zoom more to be able to do it maybe there And let's see what is the effect of this on the mass hole diagram. Oh, it's updating, sorry. So as you change the mass hole diagram, uh, the vertical uh, alignment, the mass hole diagram should be updated as well. Of course, you need to make sure that this is in Reveal Automatic and this is in Reveal Automatic. Although my existing ground is not changing. You can come here to see your alignments. Your sample lines. Your mass hole. So you can access all that from here as well. So I hope that uh, tells you some information on uh, how to do the entire project. Of course, you have to go and manually update yourself uh, until your mass hole diagram looks uh, nice and is balanced. Right? Okay, guys, that's it for today.